hello guys welcome to my channel chemical diary in this video you are going to learn about tail gas treating unit you might have known that uh, in last video sru sulfur recovery unit you have seen that uh, tail gas treating unit is a part of uh, sulfur recovery unit so in that video i showed you that uh, the gas from clostria from the condenser goes to tail gas treating unit so i have not covered uh, well about the tail gas treating unit in that because it is a deep process and a large so in this video i'm going to teach you about tail gas treating unit so this would be the sru part 2 so first of all before we are going to learn about this process equipment catalyst and reaction so main thing we must know about that uh, why tail gas treated treating unit has been set up so the first main thing about this is that uh, it reduces the emissions you know that uh, sru reducing the emission but the five percent or four percent of uh, unreacted gas which uh, not converted in sru will be converted in tgtu so this is the main function so that uh, yeah i mean to say that uh, in atmosphere there will be zero emission or 0.01 percent so for this uh, reason we have set up another tail gas um, we have set up tail gas treating unit after sru to reduce the emission and also to convert complete uh, h2s into sulfur so this is the main function or simply in the simple sense i can say that uh, tgtu tail gas treating unit convert a small amount of uh, small amount of unreacted or gas from sru or uh, from cross reactor will be converted into h2s and again uh, once it H2 is converted into h2s it is again sent back uh, sent back to the cross reactor before furnace and again in furnace it get burned and after that same as i mentioned in sru process so this is the function now let's go about the tail gas treating unit so you must know that the that the resultant gas will not be h2s and may have traces but not much so the gas from last condenser we, you have seen that uh, in the condenser uh, there were sru okay it's better if i explain a little bit overview of the sru then you will understand tgtu very well in sru i have explained you that we get gas h2s from amine treating unit and sour water stripper unit so that uh, those uh, h2s gas is nothing but sour gas which comes to close reactor in close process sru so first it goes to furnace and h2s goes in furnace and we supply air in the heart about uh, more than 1000 degree temperature and after that what's happen in that uh, sru h2s will be converted into sulfur and uh, so2 and after that uh, it go to waste heat boiler and after waste heat boiler it go to conden uh, re condenser and after that it go to close reactor and from close reactor go to another condenser and another condenser the gas goes to second uh, close reactor and the the sulfur which is converted will go to sulfur storage tank and again the gas which is not converted goes to third reactor or fourth reactor and after that the gas which is not converted in the third reactor will go to tail gas treating unit so this is about the sru now now you are going to see that this is the tail gas from the last condenser of sru so the, the gas which is coming we will we have to convert the unconverted gas we have to convert into h2s and we have to remove all the emissions uh, so that it will be good for the environment on for the downstream equipment so now let's start so tail gas from the last con uh, from the last condenser will go to the preheater this is called preheater in which we add hydrogen so tail gas comes here and in preheater we will supply steam and which uh, once it heat the gas and and the remaining will be condensed so after that the gas is heated and here we see we uh, we add hydrogen now you uh, uh, we see hydrogen is added later i will show you the reactions so hydrogen is added after hydrogen is react uh, added it goes to the catalytic reactor catalytic reactor generally consists of uh, como or coni como is nothing but cobalt molybdenum 
and uh, co cone is nothing but we say cobalt nickel the function of the cobalt molybdenum is to hydro hydrogenate the sulfur compound so for this reason we select the catalyst cobalt molybdenum so that the sulfur, uh, sulfur compound whatever present in the tail gas will be converted into hydrogen sulfide and this hydrogen sulfide will again go to uh, SRU which in then converted into sulfur so this is about uh, the reactor after reactor the generated of heat uh, steam uh, heat will be more so we cannot send to quench tower so that's why we need to we will send it to waste heat boiler uh, after waste heat boiler it goes to quench tower and after quench tower it goes to absorption tower and from absorption tower of gases will go to incinerator and uh, in absorption tower we will have uh, from top lean amine and bottom rich amine <coughs> after that we have a regenerator in which uh, we separate uh, in which H2S is separated and sent to SRU plant so this is about this so now this is the overview now we will go deeply understanding each equipment function and reaction of the tail gas treating unit so just now i told you that uh, the unreacted uh, sulfur compound or the so cos or so2 or we can say that minor amount of h2s which not converted will come to uh, tail gas treating unit so tail gas from the last condenser is the raw material for the uh, tail gas treating unit so just now you have seen about the overview now let's go for the reaction see in tail gas so2 is present so you have seen that here we are adding hydrogen so when so2 react with hydrogen it become h2s plus water and when in tail gas cos is present so cos plus h2 give rise to h2s plus co2 whereas cs2 plus h2 h2o give rise to 2h2s plus co2 and uh, so2 uh, s2 if the you know sulfur remains in s2 s3 s8 different forms uh, you might have seen there are so many forms of sulfur so this 2 2 will get cancelled so there will be sulfur so s2 plus h2 give rise to h2s so the, that is why for this reason we are adding hydrogen so you have seen that uh, the chemical reactions and why hydrogen is added to the tail gas treating unit so this reaction easily makes you understand that uh, we add hydrogen to recover as h2s and this h2s we will send it to sru sulfur recovery unit for and uh, in sulfur recovery unit obviously h2s will get converted and we recover sulfur so now let's go for the deep order wise so here we get tail gas uh, and we add hydrogen and after adding we need uh, you know that uh, the activation catalyst have activation temperature so if you supply gas at low temperature you, you will ne never be able to convert uh, this uh, tail gas into h2s so for that re reason we have to preheat the gas so for that we will send the gas to preheater preheater is nothing but a shell and type heat, heat exchanger or spiral type of heat exchanger and these heat heat exchanger or uh, heaters are uh, designed depending upon the upon the design or depending upon the vendor what they decide so preheater function is true in from one side coil in in coils steam will go and in the end of the coil you will get the condensate so whatever the gas from the tail gas treating uh, unit from the last condenser will go to uh, go to preheater in preheater it will get heated after get heated the hot gas hot uh, hot gas will go to the converter converter uh, why we say catalytic reactor or converter because it convert tail gas into h2s so that is why i call it as a converter or reactor catalytic reactor because it has catalyst and the reactor is nothing but um, in which reaction take place so this is the catalytic re reactor so reactions are that hydrogen and uh, hydrogen and this we have added and it will convert into h2s but uh, these reaction are exothermic which release large amount of heat 
so you know that uh, we need to when we need to remove h2s we need to send it to absorption column to react with uh, amine so for that reaction we need to have low temperature not uh, this high temperature which is more than 300 so that is why we need to send this catalytic reactor effluent to the waste heat boiler so in waste heat boiler what's happen uh, boiler filled water will be there and when this uh, reactor effluent will go to waste heat boiler it turns uh, boiler feed water into medium pressure stream or low pressure stream depending upon the amount of gas you have or depending about the amount of uh, unit you have about the production or i can say that capacity of the unit in simple sense so in it goes to waste heat boiler in which we we gain steam and same this steam will be used in the amine regenerator column or so water stripper unit so it's very useful it's very useful so after that waste heat boiler we send it to the quench tower in quench tower you know that uh, from bottom gas will go and from top boiler feed water is supplied uh, boiler feed water is supplied and resultant will be sore water how sore water came because h2s uh, will not uh, become when you add in water uh, it uh, fix if there is a free h2s it will react and become sore water but if there is a fixed h2s it will not get react in water and it will not get removed we need a amine solution to remove h2s then how sore water is generated sore water is generated because of this reaction cs2 plus h2 give h2s so, and uh, cus plus h2 give h2s plus co2 so we are getting this in the form of sore water and uh, you see that uh, sulfur react with uh, h2 to become uh, h2s and if there is oxygen and it will react with hydrogen to become h2o so these water will be acidic so from waste heat boiler the fluid goes to quench tower uh, here we have a tower in which uh, packing will be there to to what we can say that to minimize or for that uh, for a good contact process we keep like this so from bottom from top boiler feed water is distributed inside we will have a distributors uh, we distribute water in equal way and from bottom we will have a, a gas will go from bottom and slowly slowly gas and water both react here and after that it go to uh, whatever the sore water is generated will go and the gas which is uh, free from so so sore water will go here and here we will have knockout drum which i did not mention in the I did not mention in the diagram because it will be very bigger if I mention so for your easier understanding uh, I draw like this so after it go to knockout drum and whatever the things are there it will be removed after that it goes to absorption tower absorption tower or you can say that uh, here whatever the H2S gas uh, which is fixed amount will come here and in absorption tower we will have a packing or uh, we will have packing so packing the function of the packing is to distribute or to contact gas and uh, uh, amine or gas or liquid in a give a good contact time a good mixing time so that both react so same like this quench tower we have absorption tower in which h2s gas and co2 gas welcome i mentioned h2s gas because it is the main proportion is h2s so that's why i mentioned so in absorption tower uh, h2s gas will go and you see that uh, we have uh, from top lean amine is distributed so lean amine will be spread from different uh, distributor so lean amine will come from top and from bottom h2s will go after that uh, we have packing so h2s and linamine what will do linamine will absorb all the h2s content from the gas so and after after it uh, become after it absorbing lina uh, h2s it will become rich amine and so the rich amine content is mainly have uh, h2s co2 and some amount of cs2 in uh, in another video i have shown you about the a mine regeneration unit so this absorption tower is nothing but like a, uh, a mine regeneration unit and quench tower uh, from quench tower to so water stripper unit so you can see in another video about the so water stripper unit and a mine regeneration unit unit you will well understand about this uh, mine absorption tower 
this video is about TGTO so I will not focus much more about the amine regeneration unit so you can see other video so from top lean amine is distributed and from bottom rich amine so after that it go to heat exchanger to preheat this is nothing but interchanger in which uh, the regenerator to have high temperature uh, so it will get cool and it will send to the here and the amine we want to send to regenerator we need high temperature so that is why we exchange the heat so after absorption tower it go to the regenerator regenerator uh, is nothing but the regenerator i meant to simply say say you that why we call regenerator it regenerates the amine the amine we send here is lean amine but it become rich amine so we want to generate amine so what we will do we will send amine here and um, when when we heat the amine h2s is removed and go to sulfur recovery unit and the resulted amine will be lean amine so the this is the definition about the regenerator so the resultant gas will go to sru so you have seen that from the quench tower h2s gas will come and after that whatever the total h2s present in the gas will get uh, will get reacted with lean amine and uh, and it become rich amine so the resultant gas will be co2 mainly which go to the of gases or you can say that these are of gases or the gases um, which doesn't have h2s will go to the incinerator or you can send it to flare it's all depend upon the vendor or the plant requirement what they have set up so after that it's go to the of gas to incinerator so now only H, now focus about the h2s so after that rich amine will come to the to the regenerator regenerator before we have interchanger so it heat it preheats the amine after that it go to the regenerator in regenerator uh, it will come here and after that what's happen uh, here we have reboiler reboiler in which we supply low pressure steam so low pressure steam will heat the rich amine once rich amine is heated what will happen h2s will get separate from amine and the h2s will go to the sru reactor sulfur sru plant sru plant is nothing but sulfur recovery unit so, so this is how we converted total maximum amount of h2s into sulfur so this is about the tail gas treating unit this is very small unit uh, i have not mentioned any type of pump or any type of so many things so this is about the overview so and if you want you can comment me i will send you about the about this pfd so this is about the tail gas rating unit so you have well understand and if you have any doubts regarding this you can comment me in, on the comment box so before going to end this video again i would like to explain you about the reactions which happens here see in the tail gas tail gas contain so2 cos and cs2 and sulfur forms or you can say sulfides so these things we have to remove so we have to treat this tail gas so for this reaction we react with hydrogen see so what we will do so2 react with hydrogen to form h2s plus h2o and in quench tower cos react with h2 h2 is nothing but boil of feed water so in quench tower it become h2s will go separated and co2 separated and some amount of water is generated and co2 react with h2o in quench tower and become h2o h2s and co2 and half uh, what half so2 s2 plus h2 give rise to h2 so this is about the things and um, you know the uh, the main function of tgtu is that it reduces the emission sulfur emissions and uh, the catalyst we use is cobalt molybdenum or cobalt nickel it's all depending upon the capacity or the about the design these things are decided and cos cs2 so2 are the composition of the tail gas so we use so what we do in tail gas we hydrogenate the sulfur compound hydrogenation reactor effluent is then cooled by boiler feed water if then cooled by boiler feed water which in terms we get low pressure steam so this is about the tail gas treating unit this is after sru
and in another video soon i will post about the uh, part 3 let's call sru part 3 which contain about the sulfur granulation and soon i will post part 4 also in that i will i will mention about the sulfur handling storage and how we react with different components and how we maintain sulfur in storage and which one is easier whether granulation method of storage is easier or liquid sulfur is easier so this is about the as about the continuation of the sru process in which we have unit called tailcast treating unit thank you thank you